Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 1,662. The topic is Q&A and the title is How to Get Started in Powerlifting. I had someone reach out on Facebook Messenger. You can find us um, pretty much anywhere. I have notifications set for almost all social media things. The The ones I check regularly would be my email, brutalirongym at gmail.com. Uh, Instagram, you can reach out to us under the name Brutal Iron Gym. If people make comments on videos on YouTube, I will see that and I'll try to get back to you as much as I can. Uh, we're probably on a lot of other things. I don't even know at this point. <laughs> but if you want to reach out, uh, Instagram and email are probably the best ways. This person reached out through Facebook Messenger. I get various messages on Facebook Messenger, so that's a little bit longer for me to check in on because it's uh, some mixture of spam. Like LinkedIn, for example, is just, oh, I think it's all spam. So I don't check my messages too often there. So email and Instagram will be the best ways. But this person reached out and they asked about how to get started in powerlifting. I asked them if they, you know, do they already compete or like, like, are they familiar with the sport? Where are they at in that process? Uh, and the, they're basically, they're, they have lifted, they have done squat bench and deadlift, but they don't really know the quality of, of what they're doing if it's, you know, meat worthy, and they don't really know a lot about the sport. So they're just kind of wondering, you know, I like to lift weights, I want to get stronger, and powerlifting seems interesting to me. So I was like, okay, cool. So what I would suggest, I'm going to give you five tips on what I'd suggest. There's going to be some that are free, some that cost money. You can decide on whatever you want. (laughs) So the first thing that is free, 100% free, is to get on a nutrition program. Nutrition is going to be extremely important. You can train all you want, but training is a stimulus for change. How your body actually makes that change is with nutrition and sleep. So training, if you're training for strength, your workouts are just a stimulus to try to get the body to respond by producing more strength. The The training itself doesn't make you stronger in the sense that, yes, you, you do need to train to improve technique. You do need to train to build mental like um, confidence with the lifts and that way you don't hold yourself back when it gets heavy and you feel scared or uncertain about what you're doing. So there's definitely components within training that'll make you stronger. But once you get past kind of the initial phase of training in the sense to where kind of the newbie gains start to wear off, where the drasticness of technique improvement becomes smaller and smaller, the drasticness of mental confidence improvement becomes smaller and smaller, you're going to need to lean harder and harder into physical adaptation response. What that means is when we go try to lift something heavy, our body has to make better neurological connections to the muscles themselves, and it would help if the muscles got bigger. So if we eat correctly, we can fuel those neurological changes as well as the muscle development. But if we don't eat correctly, none of that will happen. So the food has to be in place for us to get the full benefit of our training. That is free. You can learn about that from our website. If you go to www.brutalirongym.com, I apologize that I keep mentioning this like every single podcast. I just want people to know it's there. (laughs) Is If you go to our website, www.brutalirongym.com, we have a page that's free nutrition education. The first link on that page is to create your own nutrition program. It takes you step by step, tells you how to do it. So I won't beat that to death because I've been mentioning it a lot. But that's totally free. But that's 100% important. You definitely need to start on that if you don't already know that your nutrition is, say, correct. Or if you just want to continue to kind of learn that, refine that, build upon that. That's totally free. You can find it on our website. The next thing you want to do is to familiarize yourself with the sport of powerlifting. This can also be free. If you go to YouTube and you just type powerlifting squat commands. So the last word is commands, like C-O-M-M-A-N-D-S, commands. Those are, when you're in the powerlifting competition, you have to perform a squat, a bench, and a deadlift to very specific standards of performance. You want to know 100% without a doubt what those standards are 
So that way in your training, you'll train with the exact same standards that you're going to be asked to perform with at the meet. So for example, with squats, you have to squat down to parallel and it has to be a true legitimate actual parallel, not where you kind of sort of think it maybe is parallel, but it definitively 100% is parallel. So you want to know that you're squatting to parallel. You want to know what that looks like, what the commands are, and then you want to make sure you're actually doing that in training. For bench press, you actually have to pause the bar on your chest in a powerlifting meet. So you lower the bar down to your chest. You have to pause on the chest to demonstrate that you have control of the barbell. They will then give you what's called a press command, and then you'll press the bar back to the top. You have to hold it at the top. So again, they can see that you have control of the bar, and then they'll tell you to rack. They'll tell you to put the bar back in the in the cups, basically like where you pick the bar up out of. <laughs> so those commands have to be met for that lift to be good. So if in your training on the bench press, you're just bouncing the bar off your chest at the bottom of your presses, which is very common, that will not count in a meet. So if you can bench, you know, 225, but it bounces off your rib cage, you're going to go to a power off the meet and maybe be able to do like 165 to 185, and you're going to get what's called red lighted, which means the lift won't count if you bounce it off your chest. So you want to make sure that you're pausing on your chest in your training. If you're not pausing in your training, there's no point in you doing that lift. You might think like, okay, so-and-so is an advanced lifter and they don't pause every press. Yeah, because they're an advanced lifter. If you're beginning, you want to ingrain, absolutely ingrain that good technique as just autopilot. Where you're not even thinking of it, you're doing it right. So here's a funny story. <laughs> um, my first power of the meet, I did not practice in a singlet before I got to the meet. So a singlet, you have to wear like what's called like basically like a wrestler's singlet. And you're going to learn more about this as you read into it and learn into the sport. But you have to wear these like tight, like single singlet clothes. Um, now you can just kind of pause the podcast, look that up, powerlifting singlet if you want. But it's super tight. And I remember whenever I laid down to bench press with a singlet on, that a couple thoughts went through my head. One thought was, this is really uncomfortable in my crotch because the singlet is very tight. Then I was also like, this is a really, like, unappealing position. <laughs> to do a bench press correctly, you have to squeeze your back. You have to kind of push your, your rib cage up. So I'm basically, what it felt like was pushing my stomach up. So it was, this thing is super tight in my crotch. My belly's sticking up in the air. And this is just, like, probably the worst aesthetic look I could possibly have. And I was like, this is so uncomfortable. This is a very weird activity. And while I was thinking all of that, I was actually doing the, the rep. So I had uh, uh, unracked the bar. I had waited for the start command. I brought the bar down to my chest. I paused. I waited for the press command. I pressed it. And then I remember actually becoming aware of what I was doing as I got the rack command. So what happened was, is when I laid down, I was like, oh gosh, this is really uncomfortable. This is ridiculous looking my stomach is just like sticking up i just look like i'm fat and oh my gosh this is so uncomfortable and then all of a sudden i realized i'd perform the lift i was so in my head i wasn't paying attention to what i was doing but what i was doing even while not paying attention was i brought the bar out i paused long enough for the start command i brought the bar down i paused on my chest long enough for the press command and then at the top i paused again long enough for the rack command so even though i wasn't paying attention and i didn't i can't even tell you if i heard the words the commands i still did the lift correctly and everything counted because my practice was so consistent with the commands that i didn't even have to pay attention to what i was doing so you think about it, if you drive home from work you're not even paying attention, but you're switching lanes, taking turns, this and that. Maybe you're thinking about how the day went, but you're not really paying attention. And then all of a sudden you realize, oh, crap, I'm still driving. <laughs> like, what's happening? And it was just something that was an autopilot. You didn't really have to pay attention to it for you to be able to do it. That's how consistent you need to be in your training to make sure that these lifts are of good quality. And then for deadlifts, you can't do what's called hitching, which means you can't, like, pause and then scoot the bar up your thighs it has to come up in one smooth motion 
So you want to go on YouTube, you want to type powerlifting squat commands, watch a couple videos. Type powerlifting bench press commands, watch a couple videos. And then powerlifting deadlift commands and watch a couple videos. So you want to familiarize yourself with the quality of the lifts, what's going to be expected of you, and then only train to that quality in your training, even if what weight you use has to go down, because maybe you haven't been using that good of technique, who cares? Let it go down because nothing without good technique will count. So if you're like, yeah, I'm used to benching, you know, I can bench 315, but it bounces off your chest. And then all of a sudden you try a pause and you can only pause like 245. Start with the 245, start with the pause, do it correctly. You'll eventually get back to 315. If you're stubborn and you just keep bouncing 315 off your chest, you're going to go to the meet. You're going to bomb out, which means you'll get none of your bench presses to count. You'll look like a goof <laughs> and you won't be able to finish the meet. Now, sometimes in very local meets, they'll let you still finish, but nothing will count. It, like your, your performance that day doesn't count if you do what's called bombing the meat. means you don't get any of a single lift to count. So you couldn't get any of your squats to match the commands. Doesn't count. The whole day's done. Can't get any of your bench presses to meet the commands. Whole day's done. Any of your deadlifts to meet the commands. That's it. The whole day's done. So it's challenging because you do have to be humble and you have to make sure that you're lifting to the right commands regardless of the weight load you're using because nothing without the right commands matters. Now, to learn a little bit more about how the actual powerlifting day goes, we do have podcast 318. So you can find all of our old podcasts on our website. We have a player on our website, podcast player, with instructions underneath it on how to find older podcasts. So podcast 318 is a training podcast titled Powerlifting Meet Day. So powerlifting competitions are called powerlifting meets, M-E-E-T, meet. Uh, so just that way you know. Uh, so like a bodybuilding show, uh, like bodybuilding and stuff where you step on stage are called shows, typically. Powerlifting, they're called meets. Um, like straw man competitions or competitions. Uh, so every sport has like a little bit of a, di- maybe a different way of saying they're like competition day, what they call that. But in powerlifting, they're called a meet, M-E-E-T. So you want to be familiar with that as well. But that will help you learn more about powerlifting and what like the competition itself looks like is podcast 318. Now, that's the first two suggestions. Get your nutrition under under control. And then familiarize yourself with what the sport looks like, how you have to perform the lifts. The next tip is one where, like, since I do this for a living and people pay me for it, I always feel a little conflicted about giving the advice because I just feel like it's a commercial. (laughs) But you do need to get some powerlifting-specific programming. And for programming, you get what you pay for. It's one of those things in life where... The money you spend on it is what you get for it. There are free programs you can get online. Now, are they absolute trash? No. Like, there are some good free programs. But will there be some aspects of that programming that will not be good? Yes. Will there be some aspects of that programming that don't match you specifically? Absolutely. But it's free. (laughs) So it's free. It's written for anyone. So it's going to have a little bit of just anyone in mind. So it might not have all of your individual needs in mind. But there are free. You can go to YouTube, type free programming, a uh, free powerlifting program. So YouTube, type in free powerlifting program. You'll find them. You can do that. You can start with that. You can see what it's like, you know, depending on what your finances allow. We also have our live monthly programming service, which is $50 a month. And we have a powerlifting focus program. You get brand new programming every four weeks. Every single exercise has a video tutorial with it. And in that service, you get 24-7 access to ask any question you want, and I will answer it. And I answer them pretty damn in-depth. It's a full-on personalized answer. So that, uh, that service is only $50 a month. You get really good programming that includes tons of educational components for technique and powerlifting itself. And... There's a 24-7 access to ask any questions you want at any time, and I will answer them. So pretty awesome that you get unlimited education and really good quality programming that includes education. 
Then we also have our one-on-one online coaching, which is $200 a month, where I help with everything. (laughs) So I do, I write your nutrition program for you. I write your training program specific to your needs, your schedule, your abilities, your equipment, everything. And then we check in every single week, see how everything's doing, and I educate and give feedback on all things. Nutrition, training videos, everything. That's $200 a month. Now, are there other people who coach for powerlifting? You betcha. <laughs> There's a lot. So you have to find a coach that you believe in their style of coaching and that you connect with their mindset, the way they communicate, if you vibe with them well. Uh, you want to feel confident in the person you have, not only in their knowledge, but in their ability to uh, answer questions, to be flexible to your needs. You you just want to feel like you're picking somebody who's a friend. And that's going to be a good coach for you. Is somebody that just vibes well with you. So that's who you want to find, even if it's not me. So those are your options. You have free programming. There's $50 a month programming. And then $200 a month programming. So it depends on what your budget allows. It is, you get what you pay for. So if you have the budget for the 200, it is going to be the best results in the most efficient and safe manner, without a doubt. That's just, it's just facts. If you get an expert to to focus on you one-on-one, you're going to get pretty damn good results. Assuming the expert is actually focusing on you one-on-one, not just saying they are and sending you a program that everybody else follows, which unfortunately totally sucks because it actually happens. Ugh, so frustrating. But that's what you want to do. That's the third tip. So the first tip was nutrition. Second tip was familiar, familiarize yourself with the quality of the lifts that you need to perform. And then third tip is program. Fourth tip is to get an idea of where you are. You know, if you hire a coach, send the coach your videos of squat, bench, and deadlift. Uh, just get an idea of how close you are to being able to compete. If you don't hire a coach, talk to somebody who has competed. Uh, you know, just ter- search like hashtag powerlifting on social media, find a, a, a group that does it or somebody that does it. Uh, maybe in your local gym, somebody's competing in powerlifting. Just find somebody that's powerlifted and then ask them and say, hey, don't bullshit me. I want you to be 100% honest. W- does my squat look like it would count in a powerlifting meet? Does my bench press look like it would count? Does my deadlift look like it would count? No bullshit. If you have any doubts, tell me if you have doubts. Uh, do not make me feel good and then let me go to this meet and get like bombed out and look like a a doof (laughs) doofus so i would encourage them to be totally honest with you and then when they say anything just say thank you do not argue back for the love of god do not argue back that will not help (laughs) you know if they sell you it doesn't look like you're quite parallel parallel enough and they're like well i don't know you're like i think it looks parallel you don't know it yet you don't you just don't know if they've competed and you haven't Their word is uh, just probably better than yours in regards to experience. That's like common sense. I have had people argue before, which is, uh, I don't know. (laughs) Who knows how the world works sometimes. Uh, But you just want to say thank you. And then you can also ask them, hey, before you did your meet, were there any like information resources or knowledge resources that you found really helpful? And then just anything they tell you, go read it, watch it, listen, learn it, you know, all this stuff. And then that's kind of leads into the the fifth tip is to immerse yourself. Listen to podcasts, watch videos, read books, just get into the world of powerlifting. It can be overwhelming the amount of information that's out there. But as you expose yourself to more of the information, you start to see common threads. Of the common threads, you can start to say, okay, this looks like something I should should know more about. And then you can hyper-focus on that. So you have to kind of get immersed into it. You just have to, you know, dive in head first, get immersed, learn as much as you can, expose yourself to as much as you can and start to find the common themes, the common threads. So those are five tips on how to get started into powerlifting is get the free nutrition program off our website, start getting your nutrition on point. Then look up YouTube videos for powerlifting commands for squat powerlifting commands for bench press, powerlifting commands for deadlift, familiarize yourself with those lifts, only lift with that quality, regardless of how much you have to decrease weight, make sure you lift with that quality, get a program, whether it's a free program, $50 a month program, or $200 a month program, just get a program so you actually know what you're doing when you're in the gym, and how it's going to best lead towards your goal, 
And then get an idea of where you are, talk to somebody who's competed before, get a coach, but just get some feedback on where you're at quality-wise, and then immerse yourself in the information. Awesome. Uh, that's great that this person reached out and they're excited to start powerfully. I'm going to send them a stupid amount of information uh, to get them started because I'm excited and I appreciate that they reached out to me. Uh, I don't take that lightly. I think that's uh, quite an honor and I appreciate that very much. So I'm going to send you a bunch of information and then for anybody else uh, that's thinking about getting into powerlifting, hopefully these five tips help. If you have any follow-up questions, just shoot me an email at brutalironjim at gmail.com. Cool. Well, if you like today's podcast, please share it. The more people we share the podcast with, the more people we can help. That's the whole point of the podcast, just to help as many people as we possibly can. And I appreciate everybody who helps support the podcast by sharing the podcast. Also, thank you to those who support the podcast by giving donations. There is a high hosting cost to all the different platforms that we have to pay every year. I appreciate the donations as they go help towards some of that cost. If you want to donate, you can do so on our website, www.brutalironjim.com. Even just $5 a month, anything you can give, it adds up, it helps. Um, I really, truly, truly appreciate it as it helps cover some of the costs that would make this completely absurd to do <laughs> but i'm going to try to do it anyhow i don't care i just want to keep doing it i love the podcast and it seems to really help people so i'm going to try to do it as long as i can also if you like the information we share in our podcast you can find more from us on our social media channels you can find us and please follow us on instagram and youtube under the name brutal iron gym as always i hope this was helpful and thank you for listening